Okay, in this video, um, I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to do some uh, organic mass modelling and then use that mass model uh, to create building elements like a glass curtain wall. So what I've done is I've just started a new project using the standard architectural template. Um, I've created a couple of grid lines running across the screen. I'm going to call and refer to them as grid line 1 and grid line 2. Uh, they're 3 metres apart. So I've set up grid 1, grid 2, 3 metres apart. I've then drawn a reference plane and then arrayed that reference plane or copy it if you like uh, so that we've got six spaces at 1800. I'll just do a dimension there. You can see there coming up as all 1800. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'll go to the Massing and Site tab and I'll do an in place mass. Now, give it a name. Um, I'll just leave this called Mass 1 for the moment. You possibly will get a dialog box pop up then saying it's about to turn the, um, the mass override visibility on. So just answer uh, OK to that dialog box. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I've got ground floor and level 1 to play with here at the moment. So I think I'll go to level 1 for starters and I'll draw a spline up here. Um, and I'll create a spline from through these intersection points of this grid and reference planes that I've created. I escape to finish that command. And that's at level one. So down at ground floor then, so I'll change to ground floor now, and you know I'll I'll, I'll do an arc shape. Um, Oh, and sorry, I better escape out of that. So as it seems to as I've gone from ground one, I need to draw that arc shape and change the ref the placement plane. So at the moment it's still placing it on level one where I was before. So I'll change that to ground floor. And let's create a shape, something like that. Now what I might do is I'm going to close that shape off into some... Um, closed loop like that and I'll do the same back up at level 1 I'll close off that shape that we drew at level 1 might as well just trace over the same block so up at level 1 now I've got that closed loop shape that I'm highlighting there at the moment okay so you can see this happening in a 3D view better uh, because we're, we're uh, creating, we're still in this mass editor, we haven't changed out of the mass editor, and we've got these two shapes through here. If you select both shapes by control clicking, so you're selecting both at once, you can just click the create form button, and that creates a form out of that. I'll change to a shaded mode, so you can get the idea of what we're looking at through there. We've cre created quite an organic sort of a front surface there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that front surface there and show you how you can then simply divide that surface up a number of different ways. So that's divided it up at the moment into 10 equal spaces, so 10 in the U direction and 10 in the V direction. Uh, you might want to play around with those figures to make it uh, do something a little bit different. Um, possibly I'll just change to six and nine or something like that. But you know, whatever you, whatever you think there is fine. Now the other thing that you can do also is you can change the pattern that's been created through there. So you can just have a look at a few different patterns and a few different effects there. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it back as no pattern, just for the moment. What I need to do now is I need to create some sort of geometry which will automatically follow the divided pattern um, on here. So what I'll do for that is I'll go to the Revit button and I'll do a new family. 
And the family that I'm looking for will be a metric curtain panel based. Metric kernel, metric curtain panel pattern based family. So I'll open that up. So this opens up a pattern that can be repeated on any panel. So I'm work we're working with these three reference, sorry, these four reference lines that have already been created. And for this simple little exercise, I'm not going to do anything more than just trace over these. But you can actually create any geometry and set the geometry up to be offset any distance through any one of these reference planes through here. So we've got a number of reference planes attached to each of these points. You can set that reference plane up and then establish point geometry um, at any point uh, that is referenced from those reference planes. And then you can use those points to draw geometry onto it. But for this particular exercise here, I'm just going to use this pattern, which as you see, could be um, the grid form that we've just placed back in our project. Uh, these, these green lines would represent the grid form in that project, as simple as that. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do first of all, I'm just going to place a point element on one of these green lines. Um, and the reason why I've placed that point element on the green lines is now you can set the work plane, set that work plane to that point element, if I wish. I won't bother doing that just at the moment because what I want to do first of all is I want to select all of these reference lines that form the four reference lines that chain up around and I want to create a form out of those and let's create a form with some depth rather than just a flat plane so let's form with some depth but I'll give that something quite small like a sheet of glass 10 millimeters thick or something like that and while it's still highlighted I'll change to its material and over here I'm clicking into the material properties and I'll change its, the material to glass and click OK so we've got a sheet of glass now uh, in that in that area I'm going to set using the set command up here I'm going to set the reference plane to that point. So hover over that point and click. And if I show you where that reference plane is now, hold it around, you can see that I've established that reference plane on that point. So you don't have to have the show uh, selected there once you've used the set. Now, if I wanted to create something like a 150 by 50 uh, curtain wall mullion, Let's do something like that. So I'll draw a rectangle from the origin point there. Any distance, I'll have just a sketch any distance to start with. Now I'll hover and tab so I select just one line so that I can change that to 50 millimeters. And then hover, tab, select just one line and change that to 150 millimeters. Now, if I wanted to centralise that also, just change the thin lines at the moment so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'll select that and I'll just move it in a couple of moves. I'll move from the midpoint to the end point and then I'll move it again from that end point to that midpoint or a combination such like that, such that we've now organised that rectangle to be in the middle of that point, central about that point. So what I can do now is if I select all those reference lines again and then control select the rectangle as well so they're all selected, I can create another form. Okay, so taking note of this family now, the family name at the moment at the top here, just check the title bar, this is family one. So if I load this back into my project, this project should now have a family called family one. I'll we'll just do this from 3D view now. So what you can see we can do with this now is select that curtain panel there and drop down the type selector and underneath the rectangle you'll now see that you've got a family called family one and that's got all of your curtain wall geometry buried into it. So I'm just going to select family one. It'll take a little while to do all the calculations and there we go. We've divided that organic shape now 
up into a series of straight segments to form that curtain wall. Using that, that organic geometry as the starting point. Okay, I'll just stop the video there at the moment, and when we come back, we'll show you how you can split that organic shape up into pieces so that you might want to carve out a section which might have to have a straight wall section in it. So I'll just stop the video at the moment.